Such a blessing to be here this morning. Exciting times. It's exciting times. The unity that, that, that God is bringing together with, with the body of Christ is, is just above and beyond measure. Uh, you know, we can uh, be gloom and doom and say, well, this is going on and this is going uh, wrong and, and everything like that. But, but my, my scenario of it is, is in a positive thinking, in a positive uh, uh, scenario, what is going right? What is going right for you and I? And, and I will say this, that I see millions and millions of people coming back to the throne room and to the cross of Christ. Amen. I see a million people coming back because people are, have questions. People have all kinds of questions. And listen to me, you and I have the answers. You and I have the answers this morning. This morning, I want to speak to you on something that, that's so important because without it, you and I will not survive. And it's called endurance. Everybody say endurance this morning. Endurance is so important. Yes, your victory will be found in your endurance. Without endurance, there is no victory. Victory is where your endurance is at. It's a durability. It's a persistence. It's a continuance. It's an ability to withstand hardship or adversity. The ability to sustain a prolonged stressful effort or activity. I can say this in the last couple of months, we, we've been under some stress, amen? I mean, our kids are at home or, you know, uh, you know, people are at home and, and, and we're, we're at our wits end. This is a stressful time, but listen to me. The only way we get through it this morning is through endurance. There's three things that we need you and I to walk in victory. And the first thing this morning is we have to claim it. And listen to me, Christian people don't have a problem with claiming it. Amen. Christian people don't have a problem. The second is to obtain it. That's something a little different. We can claim it all day long, but if we don't obtain it. And then the third is the toughest. When you claim it and you obtain it, then you've got to sustain it. You've got to maintain it. And that is where your endurance and my endurance comes in. Endurance this morning, it, it, it's crazy. I, I began to pray about this and it, it, God took me back to my seventh grade year. And, and I promise you, this is a story that no one has heard before. I forgot about it until this week. My seventh grade year and I, and I went out for track and, and I was a uh, uh, high jump and, and, and I was a uh, long jump and it was our first meet and I heard my coach say, hey, Pinkston, come here. So I jog over and he says, hey, he said, uh, we've, we've got a problem. He said, so-and-so didn't show up. I, I need you to run the 400 meter. How many people know that good intentions, no endurance? Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Great intentions. Y'all put me in, coach. And he says this. I remember it like it was yesterday. He says, get out in front and stay in front. Well, for a seventh grade kid, I mean, that's, you know, so that's what I did for a while. The gun fired and I took off like a rocket ship and I went around that first turn and man, I was, I was booking and I was cooking. I mean, I was, I was making hay. Second turn, I was doing the same. The third turn, for some odd reason, there started to be a pain in my side. Come on. You know exactly what I'm talking about, that pain. I had that pain in my side. The fourth turn, and listen to me, can I be honest with you? I was out of gas. And though I was in front, I began to slow. And then there went one person by. Come on. And there went another person by. And now I will say this, that I didn't end up last, thank God, but I was darn close. But listen to me, I had great intentions that day. I had great intentions, but no endurance. Have you ever been there? Sure you have. Great intentions. Romans 15, 4 and 5 says this. For all that was written in the past to teach us that endurance and encouragement of Scripture, you might have hope. May the God who give you encouragement and endurance give you a spirit of unity. And I believe this morning that with this, this COVID-19 and, and the, everything that's going on in our community and in our world today, I, I know this, that, that there is a spirit of unity in the kingdom of God like never before. A 
spirit that can't be broken. An endurance. Will Barclay said this. William Barclay says, endurance is not just an ability to bear a hard thing, but to turn it into glory. Think about that. Endurance is not only enduring a hard thing, but it's turning it into glory. And I began to think exactly what that meant. And, and it, it took me to, to some young men in, in, in our community. And it took me to men in, in, in military. Our own Kate Walker is, is uh, in basic training right now. And I, I'll say this, that nothing basic about it. Nothing basic about it. He's in basic training, and, and when he went in, I, can I be honest with you? Kate kind of had a swagger, amen? If you know Kate, you know, you know what I'm talking about. He kind of had a swagger about himself. He was cool. And, and, and he's, he's about 10 weeks in, and, and I begin to see posts, and I begin to see videos, and I begin to see pictures. And in just that short time, there's an endurance, and there has been a change in Cade. Think about that. Think about that. See, listen to me. There's nothing basic about the training. Or what about a, a young man by the name of Nicholas Jett from Princeton? U.S. Marines. He's also in basic training at this time. And thank God he's got his mama's looks. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. And, and, and I, I remember little Nick uh, going to, to uh, uh, outings and, and I remember him as in a stroller and a pacifier and a bottle in his mouth. And, and I get on Facebook today and, and I see him standing. I, I'm telling you right now, this kid looks like he is 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Why? Because listen to me, he is seeking and having endurance within him, amen? Think about that. Going in one way, and coming out another. Hebrews 12 and 2 says this, speaking of Jesus, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame as he sat, and then he sat at the right hand of the Father. Think about that. Listen to me. Not only Jesus was looking down the road, amen? Uh, uh, people like Nick, Nicholas Jett is looking down the road, Cade Walker is looking down the road. They are looking beyond their pain. They're looking beyond what is in front of them. This morning I ask you this, what is your mountain? Because listen to me, everybody's got a mountain this morning. Every one of us have a mountain. And without endurance, you'll not make it. I love uh, uh, Pastor Chip has said this multiple times in, in, in settings. He says, there's no mountain high for a climber like you and I. Think about that. Boy, that's encouragement this morning. There's no mountain high for a climber like you and I. Mark 13, one through 13, and for time restraint, I, I won't get into it, but, but Jesus began to prophesy and he began to tell his disciples exactly what was gonna happen. He says this, he says he was be talking to his disciples and he was going through and seeing about wars and rumors and wars and hatred. And he says this, earthquakes. And he says, but those who endure to the end, they shall be saved. Think about that. I, I wanna say something that I believe with all my heart. What don't kill you will make you stronger. What don't kill you will make you stronger. Second Corinthians six and four, Apostle Paul speaking says, in troubled times, in my troubles, in my hardships, in my distresses, it was my endurance that got me through. Think about that. Benjamin Netanyahu talking about Hamas. He says this, he says, it is the Jewish people it was the Jewish people that will endure till the end and we will see this thing through. Second Timothy four and seven, apostle Paul speaking to Timothy and he tells Timothy, he says, stay the course, Timothy. Stay the course, F finish the race. Finish the race. Look at someone this morning that didn't finish well. I look at 1 Samuel 28 and 15, King Saul. King Saul had everything at his disposal and he had no endurance. 
The man had everything, yet he lacked one thing, and that was endurance. King Saul, King Saul in, in 28 and 15, he said to Samuel, he said, I'm in great distress, agony, hurt, pain, misery. See, under distress more than any person in the Bible was King Saul. 40 years of being king, 21 chapters into his reign, and eight times it was spoken of himself under distress. Distress over rejection. Listen to me. When you put yourself in, in Saul's, King Saul's position, it is you and I all over again because we have been rejected and we have been distressed over it. He was rejected, distressed over Goliath, over David, over Jonathan, over Samuel. He was distressed in many ways like you and I have been in the past. A battle ensued. He lost his sons. He takes an arrow. And because he had a lack of endurance, he chose to take his own life. Some might say, you don't understand. How, how do we endure the pain, the disappointment, the dreams, the broken homes, the broken lives, the broken relationships? And I will tell you this morning, listen to me. It's not how you start, it is how you finish, amen? It is how you finish. King Saul had no endurance to finish. And quitting is easy when things get bad. That seventh grade track team, I remember starting it, but I don't remember finishing it. Why? Because I quit. I quit. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Listen to me. You and I can use our life circumstances as a crutch. We can, but we shouldn't. Victim versus victor. Revelations 1 and 9, someone that had mighty endurance was John the Revelator on the island of Patmos, exiled, boiled in oil, and continued on with the faith. We've always said this, when you have a big God, your problems seem small. But when you have a small God, your problems seem big. Can I be honest with you this morning? You are going to suffer. You're going to suffer. Romans 5, 3 and 4 says suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character and character produces hope. All of us this morning, all of us in the end should be stronger than when we started. And we all have scars. Each and every one of us this morning have scars. Not, a one, not one of us this morning listening haven't been wounded a time or two. But it is the endurance that sees us through. Rodney Winter says this, scars are not a sign of weakness. They are a sign of survival and endurance. Think about that. I have scars and because of the endurance, they've been allowed to be healed, no longer hurting, but a symbol of remembrance. If you have physical strength, over spiritual strength, you'll never make it. You'll never make it. Ephesians 6 and 12 says this, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against flesh and blood, it's a spiritual thing. And when all we have done to stand, stand. Matthew 9 and 29 says this, Jesus speaking it says, according to your faith, so be it. According to your faith this morning, let it be done. This morning I ask you in closing, do you have endurance? Do you have endurance? Do you have the, the persistence? 
and the durability to go through the hard thing. Because the only way that you will see your victory is by having the very thing that we're talking about this morning. Father, this morning, we thank you so much. Father, we thank you that what you are doing in our midst, our brothers and sisters that are coming back to Christ, it's that easy, Father God. Father God, when we stumble, when we fall, we get back up because of who you are and what you've done in us. And even, Father God, when, when I forget who I am, remind me. Remind us on a daily basis, Father God. Remind us of who we are. Father God, and give us the endurance. Not with great intentions, Father God. Because we all have had great intentions. But give us the strength, the wisdom, and the know-how to move beyond, moving beyond a wilderness type Christian to a kingdom type Christian, Father God, where we are advancing, where we are taking ground like never before. And we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in your son's precious name. And a church that believes that says, amen. amen. Bless you.